Welcome to another video by A Pits Furniture. Please visit www.apitsfurniture.com to learn more about the woodwork school that I'm currently sharpening on the, all the tools for, which are some of them are here. So I'm just going to quickly tell you how to sharpen a brand new plane. Easy, you know, no fuss. Here we go. So this is a high quality. Uh, this is a rabbiting block plane, but for the purposes of this video, any modern good quality plane, uh, what is it, Wood River they do one, this is Kuangsheng, Luban, all that. So, first of all, let's take it apart. So we're just going to undo this brass knob screw here. Take that off. Have to take the blade out at an angle on this one, not normally. So you can see it's covered in grease. See that? Right, so thinners is what I'm using. Do this in a well ventilated area. We're just gonna get a tiny bit of that on this rag and we're just gonna wipe off any of the grease because we don't want the grease on our sharpening equipment, nor do we want it on the, work, on the wood and the work that we're going to be using these tools on. Tiny bit more, the body of the plane is also covered in the grease. So the oil, so we'll just get that off quickly. I put this on just so it doesn't rust in transport. Also, don't forget the inside of the plane. Right, grease free, oil free, great. I put a lid back on that. Now, sometimes with new planes, the mouth which is this part of the plane, might have a burr on it, which might then affect your, your plane iron sitting flush. So I've just got a really small fine file here and I can see and feel that there's a burr on there and I'm just gonna carefully file this out. I don't wanna be filing this surface here, that's where the plane iron sits, but just this very edge, right on the edge of the mouth, just want to make sure that there is no burr on there. I feel that with my hand. I've got a little brush here. Right, that seems good to me. Great. So next step, put that to one side. We need to sharpen this plain iron. So come over here with me. Where are we going to sit you? We'll sit you right here. There we are. Is that okay? Yeah, comfortable? Great, right, I'm just going to come around you here. Whoops. There we go, right, so, first of all, we need to flatten the back. So these are ground in the factory and a good quality plane they're reasonably flat, but not quite good enough. Now you can see in the light, you can see the grinding marks on it. We want to get rid of that, but for ease, we only need it next to this top edge, because that is where the cutting part of the blade is. So I use Scary Sharp. You can look this up online. Just some water in here. Spray that just a tiny bit, okay? So what I'm gonna do it's just two or three fingers on there. You only want this about 25 mil an inch over the edge of your sharpening stone. Force down with these two fingers. This one just for a tiny bit of support. We're just gonna move this backwards and forwards a few times. Now this is a 40 micron uh, sharpening stone, or sharpening paper. You just wanna do this a few times. There you go, maybe 20 times that, that was. Get a tissue. And now we can see immediately where our high spots are. Our high spots are the shiny part. So we can see along here and along here they're shiny. So what we want is this edge here to be shiny. So we'll keep doing that. So I use this scary sharp system, which is actually just some very high quality adhesive backed abrasive papers that are attached onto a piece of glass. 
and then the piece of glass is glued onto a piece of plywood that is in this makeshift nailed together jig. I find it good in terms of its price. It is very cheap compared to other high quality options that go to very fine finishes. Unlike a wet stone or an oil stone, they do not cause a dish in them. So you get a camber on the blade, we don't want that. So we keep doing this, la 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 la. Go to the other side if you want. Let's have another look. How's it going? So we're slowly moving up, but we want this edge. We don't care about the rest of it. We just want this edge here. So I'll keep going. I've done this many times today. Annoyingly, this is the worst one so far. Often, by this time, they'd all be done across that top edge. So we're just wanting the mirror across the top, you know, one or two mil of this blade. We don't need a huge amount because like I say, the cutting edge is at the edge of the blade. So we don't need it to be super flat for the rest of it. Obviously as you sharpen the chisel or the plain iron, you'll then need to flatten the back further down the iron as you go because you'll be reducing its length when you sharpen it. But once this is done the first time, it becomes a lot easier. So you can see here, we're beginning to curl back round on itself. So we're slowly closing that up. And this is real time, so you can see how long it's taking me. We want to be careful we don't tip this blade at all, because then we're not going to have that back flat. We're going to put a groove in it. Very small groove, but still a groove, and we don't really want that, especially on our brand new plane. So we'll keep going. How's it doing now? Well, we're guessing there, we're guessing there. Keep going, adding water where we need. Now you can get special additives to put in the water for lubrication and anti-rusting properties. We're doing this, you know, the quick and easy, cheap way. And like I've got this scary sharp adhesive backed abrasive paper because it gives good results at a fair price, I'm just using water. I've never had an issue. I've used this method for you know, five years or so on these kinds of tools and it's been fine. So we're nearly there. If you want, you can go to a higher abrasive paper, but then you've got to then go down through the microns to get it nice and smooth and shiny. Now the shininess, you know, people do it because they say, oh yeah, it looks good. Things like that. The shininess doesn't need to be a mirror. It just needs to be flat. And the shininess implies that the blade is flat. So we can go around in circles, go in big ovals. The good thing is though, you should use the entire surface of your sharpening surface. Because doing that means that it wears evenly and then once we've done this and we go to sharpen the angle on it, this side doesn't sharpen slower than this side. That's just how it is. So how's it looking? Oh, we're so nearly there. We've got about half a millimeter of shininess along the edge of the cutting edge. Just keep going a bit more. Some people put a back bevel on their tools. On this particular one, I'm not going to as it's a bevel up plane, a bevel up plane, but that's up to you, you can do your own research on that. All I'm doing is showing you how I sharpen my tools. Keep going here, right, let's have a look. Careful you don't cut yourself. Right, we're gonna keep doing that a tiny bit more. 
for demonstration, let's go up to a higher grit and show you what I mean. So at the moment, it's nice and shiny. You can hear how much more abrasive that is. And I can feel it with my fingers that it's requiring a bit more force, a bit more oomph to move it across that sharpening surface. Good to put a bit of music on in the background. So you can immediately see that is not as mirror-like as it was before. But I can see that the grind marks from the factory are going away, which is what we want. Well, at least along that top millimetre of the blade. So we're ever so close now. We're nearly there. Sometimes you want to put your other hand on there as well. Go ahead. Now the plane that this particular blade is for is a rabbiting block plane which means that the blade is t-shaped as you can see now most tools that you're going to be sharpening aren't like this but you know it doesn't matter the, the general principles are all the same it's just this particular tool I thought you know what I'll show you how I go about doing this so you know skip through the video if you want because this no doubt is boring for you it's not the most enjoyable thing I've ever done. Or the most interesting. So we can see on here, or I can see on here, we are almost there. Sometimes I like to put the chisel or the plane iron at a different angle between the grits so that I can see when the scratch lines are gone from the previous grip. Because if this is 100 micron, if I go all the way down to 20, and there's some scratches in there, I'll have to go all the way back up to 100, or not 100, but the one lower. So the one I've got is 50 or 40. Go from there all the way back down to 20, which is just a bit annoying. So I can see on here, I'm happy with that. I've got a nice small edge across the top of that plane blade. So now we will do this a few times on the 40 micron, polish it up. I'm going straight now, where I was going at an angle before. Move over to the other side of the stone, go again. Now I'm putting down some force, but not a huge amount. You don't need it to be a lot. Keep going. Right, let's have a look. Now that is polishing up nicely along that top edge. So at this point, we're just flattening the back. We're not doing the angles yet. That comes later. Move down again to a 30 micron. And this is generally for the back of a chisel where I leave it. And I think that 30 micron is appropriate in terms of efficiency to actually sharpen the chisel, but also, you know, the mirror near the flatness, the performance is as much as I'm looking for in my tools. Now, not saying that, you know, I'm bodging the sharpening process, but in reality, it doesn't make a difference. So why waste time when you could be getting on with your project that you're working on? Right, let's have a look at that. Might be a bit difficult to see in the camera, but you can see the shiny patches here 
this original grind in the middle and just across oh, apitsfurniture.com just across that top edge it's ultra shiny so that's what i'm looking for right i'll keep that in there at the moment so i like to use a honing guide this makes sharpening a lot easier this particular one is a veritas one but you can get lots of different brands i bought this second hand so this blade i know is an inch and three eighths or thereabouts so i'm just going to set that on mine won't go through that too thoroughly because depending on what you've got, that's fine. This is already ground to 25 degrees. Now that is important to know. General planes, I'm just going to say all planes, you want the primary bevel at 25 degrees. Now I like to put on my bevel up planes, which is what this one is. I just put a small secondary bevel just a couple of degrees over 25 so, you know, 27 or so. So I'm going to put this through here, line that up to where I want it, begin to lock it down, I loosen that off. Now, with all jigs, you want to make sure it's square, so you've got to push it up to some reference line. All the jigs have that, and it's just a case of looking at the particular instructions. So we have done that, tighten that, tighten that, lovely. We'll loosen that off, slide that out. Now, here we go. So this rolls on this wheel. They all have a wheel that roll on your sharpening stone. So let's just put a bit of water on there. So what this is going to do, the way I have this set is this is set to about 27 degrees. So it will start to form a very small line across this new grind. And if you've got an old plane, like an old Stanley that has an old beaten up blade in it, what you have to do is you'll have to probably redo the primary bevel, which is this one, so it's nice and square. These are brand new. I'm talking about how to set up a brand new plane here. You don't have to do that. So I can just go straight on to the secondary bevel. Now I'm starting on a 30 micron, which is quite um, fine, but that's fine. The secondary bevel only needs to be, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, maybe a millimeter line across. So we'll just do that a few times, what that maybe 20 times. So we can see this blade is very, very slightly out of square. We've got more of a shine here than we do here. So what we want to do is keep doing that until we have that shine across the entire edge of the blade. If we don't do that, then we're only really sharpening part of the blade. And that's, you know, that doesn't help us at all because then when we plane, we're only gonna have half of the plane iron be sharp, and then it's gonna mess up all sorts. So if that's taking a while, no, that's nearly there. Might be able to see that, that shiny part. You can nearly see. That's so small, that's maybe 0.2 mil at the moment. I'm gonna do this a few more times. Maybe another 30 or 40 times. And that line will be about a millimeter from the edge, at least a millimeter, I should say, all the way across that edge. So keep going. Don't get bored, don't fall asleep. Keep at it. Let's have another look. Just wipe it off with a cloth. So nearly there, you can see it's creeping towards that far edge. Another spritz of water. Let's keep going. Now, if you wanted, you could just use a more coarse one to begin with and then work your way through the grits or down through the micron scale. But I like to just start on like a 30 micron uh, paper, let's say, sharpening surface. So I feel this is a good balance between speed and also, you know, not taking off too much. Often you don't have to do it this much. So we are nearly ever so close to that far edge. So when we're doing this, we want to put even pressure on the blade. So I've got a finger each side, pushing into it, but not tipping it like that. You don't want to tip it like that. Let's change the angle of this so you can better see what I'm doing. There you go. 
see if that's any better. And going at an angle, as you can see, like making V shapes, again, to use the entire surface of this sharpening stone. In place. Now I have this white board down underneath. When you're starting out, or, well, when you're starting out, you won't have a dedicated sharpening station. So you want to keep your actual workbench underneath clean. So this is just a white, you know, chipboard covered in a melamine type veneer. It just helps keep my workbench clean and it's just clamped onto the surface. So we're so nearly, nearly there. Just to speed things up, we've got just to the 40 micron. Same as before, I should have just done this in the first place. Oh well. So I can feel, and you might be able to hear, that is so much more abrasive. There you go, you can see straight away, we have a nice shinier surface. Cross edge. Go back to the 30. Sorry for wasting your time, should have done that to begin with. A bit of water on there. What's that? Oh, a bit of tissue. Do it the other way if you want, if you feel more comfortable doing it like that. Give it a wipe, have another look. Yeah, I can see that that is getting shinier. Great, so now we're gonna go down to the nine micron, which is, you know, very, very smooth. Almost like a, you know, silk. Very, very smooth. And it's almost like a leather strop almost in terms of how fine it is. This is just buffing the surface. So while we do this at an angle, we're creating a burr which you can feel with your finger on the back of the blade, which means that that cutting edge actually isn't very sharp because you've got that burr. If you think about the iron itself comes here, if you've got a burr coming back, it's almost overlapped, so it's extra thick, which is what we're trying to avoid. We want that to be really thin, so it can really easily slice into the wood. Right, let's have a look at that. Lovely stuff, fantastic. So what we're gonna do is take that out of our jig, and we're going to address our honing guide. We're going to address that burr that I can just feel on the back of that blade. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our sharpening stone, bit more water and we're just going to pretend to back it again like we did before but all I'm going to do is just one downward stroke and I come here fill the angle where it's at do it again one down and that is where I leave it now that is a super sharp blade that is unreal okay so that's what we're looking for just clean off any dirty water from the sides because we don't want our iron to rust. Okay, so now we've done that, what we're going to do is put it back in our plane. So bring you over here. So we've degreased our plane body. We can rest this in here. I just like to make sure that this depth adjuster is roughly in the middle, which it is, just in case it's not. Put our iron back in there. And I just make sure it's, you don't want it all the way up here. If you can see, that is ages away from the edge. So what we want to do, put it down a few notches to where it's almost sticking out, but not quite. We make it as square as we can, just by eye. Clip that in place and tighten it up. We don't want to go super tight. Now with this rabbiting block plane, we don't want the blade to stick out the edges. Just loosen that off a bit. So we'll do that. Right, so we'll just nip it tight so the blade is sharp. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hold this up. We can clean the sole this way. Don't go the other way, you'll cut your fingers off. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking down 
the sole of that plane, just at a slight angle. I can see that blade isn't sticking out at all. So we can twist this, still not sticking out. Twist it until the plane iron begins to come out. So can you see that? That is now sticking out. You can see that stripe. You can see it's higher up here than it is over there. Let me just confirm that out of the camera, yes. So with these ones, they don't have a lever like on an old Stanley plane. So I'm just going to take a wooden tool. This is just a, a file handle. I'm just going to tap that, reassess where we're at. A bit too much, so we'll just tap it a bit lighter on this side. Could just use a little hammer. Doesn't really matter if you dent the blade in that place. And now if you look down, you can see that that line is completely even. So we'll tighten that up just once more, and then we can back off the blade and keep checking down. And we just want that blade to stick up a hair above the surface. And I can see that that is just sticking up. And that's because we want to take a really fine shaving. With these high quality tools, generally you're doing really accurate, nice, clean work. So you just want to take small shavings off. It gives a better finish. So once you're happy, with how that blade is in there, which I am. I'm gonna tighten this up. Now I normally do it five, you know, seven times, something like that, till it gets tight to the grip. And that is our plane set up. So let's quickly just show you what this plane looks like in use. There's a piece of oak over here. Let's see the shaving that comes off it. that, if you can hear, it's quite thick. So let's loosen that off five times again. Withdraw the blade very slightly, tighten it again. Now, I'm not doing it by sight anymore because you're not going to be able to see that. I'm now just doing it by the feel of the tool and the result of the shavings. So again, tiny bit too far out. We'll go back again. Did I just go the wrong way there? Nope, that's fine. Tighten it up. Now these shavings are getting finer and finer. And these ones, now that is a fine shaving. Here you can see how fine these shavings are. They just break apart, they're so thin. So that is how, from start to finish, how to set up a brand new plane, um, you know, the degreasing, getting rid of the oil, how to sharpen a blade. The blade was obviously in very good condition when we got it, it's brand new, hasn't been used. When you buy these second hand, they might not have had much use, and so you want to do a very similar process to this. And there we go. That is how to set up a nice block plane. We'll put that in the box. Now, as I said, I'm sharpening all these tools for the Apitz Furniture Woodwork School. So please visit my website, apitzfurniture.com. Go to the Woodwork School tab and you can learn some more about where all these lovely tools are going to be used. All right, thanks again for watching.